welcome back to my channel today i have a really fun video for you i am going to be sharing four different halloween treat ideas i did two that were a little bit unhealthier and then i tried to do two healthier treat ideas as well obviously this time of year there's lots of junk and lots of treats so i figured it'd be fun to do a couple of healthier options in there and today's video is also a collab with my friend mama cat here on youtube she's super sweet i know you guys are going to love her channel she posts very similar content to mine. She does cleaning, she does grocery hauls, and some other food related content. So when you are done watching today's video, go head over there and give her some love. Let her know that I sent you. She will also be sharing some Halloween recipes. And if you are coming over here from her channel, I just want to say welcome. My name is Caitlin. I do a lot of food related content on my channel with a little bit of organization and motherhood sprinkled in the mix. So if that is something you're interested in, I would love to have you on my channel. But let's go ahead and get into all of these Halloween treat ideas. To start off, I'm just making my all-time favorite chocolate cupcake recipe and I'm just decorating them to be a little bit more festive for Halloween. So I'm making this whole recipe in my stand mixer. I'm just getting all of the dry ingredients mixed together first. So this is two cups of sugar, one and three quarters cup of flour, three quarters cup of cocoa powder, and then you're going to need a teaspoon and a half of baking powder as well as baking soda. And then you're also going to need one teaspoon of salt. You're just gonna get all of these dry ingredients mixed together. After you have all of your dry ingredients really well combined, you're gonna add in all of the wet ingredients. So you're going to need two eggs, one cup of milk, about one to two teaspoons of vanilla extract, as well as half a cup of vegetable oil. And then you're going to get all of this mixed together. Now while that's mixing, you're gonna to want to get one cup of water boiling, and then you're just going to gradually add that into your batter. This will give you a very liquidy batter, but I promise that's exactly what you want. It makes these cupcakes super moist and delicious. Now I'm actually ready to get my cupcakes in the oven. So I chose to use some Halloween liners, of course, to make these a little bit more festive, but use whatever you have on hand. And then I'm just spraying them with a little bit of oil so nothing sticks to the actual liner. And then I'm filling up my cupcake tins about halfway full. You don't want to overfill these or they're just gonna turn into an overflowing mess. So make sure that they're only about halfway full. You're going to bake these in a 350 degree oven for about 18 to 20 minutes. You'll know that they are done when you can insert a toothpick in the center and it will come out fully clean. This is what they should look like when they come out of the oven. They're super delicious. I absolutely love this recipe. Now we're moving on to actually making the frosting. So I'm just melting one cup of semi-sweet chocolate chips until those are fully melted. I just throw them in the microwave. It makes the process really nice and easy. You can set that chocolate aside to cool off while you're mixing up the rest of the frosting. So here I have two sticks of butter. I was using salted on this day, but you can use either the salted kind or unsalted. Either will work just fine for this frosting recipe. And you're just gonna whip those up for a minute or so until everything gets nice and creamy. And then you're gonna add in about a teaspoon or two of vanilla extract, as well as one cup of powdered sugar. You will be adding in another one, but I like to do it one cup at a time. And you're gonna mix this up on about level two or three, and you're gonna want this to get really nice and fluffy. Once all of that is combined, you can go ahead and add in the second cup of powdered sugar. And this is where you're really gonna want to whip it for a good minute or so until everything gets nice and fluffy. Mm -hmm. 
After you've mixed your frosting and it is pretty well creamy and fluffy, you can add in those melted chocolate chips. You do want to make sure that those are cooled off because otherwise the chocolate will just melt the butter in this recipe. So make sure it's cooled off and then you can just add that into your stand mixer. And then you're gonna whip this for another minute or so and this is going to be the most delicious chocolate buttercream that you have ever had. I promise you it's my all time favorite. Then I just throw that frosting right into my little piping canister here. I can link it down below. I just got mine off of Amazon. It's from the brand Wilton. I think I paid around $10 for it and it works really well for frosting cupcakes. I've tried to use piping bags in the past but they just do not work for me. But this works really, really well. So if you are looking to get something a little bit different and start decorating more cupcakes this is a really good one now it's time to actually decorate the cupcakes so I just chose some chocolate sprinkles and then I picked up these little candy pumpkins at the store and I think these cupcakes turned out really cute they're all very simple to make and something that your kids could also definitely help you with now if you found some Halloween sprinkles at the store I think those would be absolutely perfect unfortunately my store was all out of them so I just chose some chocolate sprinkles and they were still super cute and festive with the pumpkin on top You can leave these cupcakes at room temperature or what our family likes to do is actually put them into the fridge. It just makes the frosting really delicious and rich, but I promise you this is the best chocolate cupcake recipe that we have ever made. My husband requests this one all the time and I promise you're going to love this. Next up, I'm just making these little candy corn fruit parfaits. They kind of look like a candy corn and they're a little bit on the healthier side. So you're just going to need some sort of canned fruit. I chose to do peaches and pineapple. You're going to want one that is orange and one that is yellow, but this is what I had on hand, so it's what I used. And I'm just draining off both of the cans here. I did go ahead and save all of that juice because it's really great to add into smoothies. This is the 100% pure fruit juice one. And then you're going to need some sort of glass to put everything in. So you're going to want to put the yellow fruit on the bottom with the orange on top. And then you're just going to add a little bit of whipped cream right on top. And this is such a great healthier version of a Halloween treat. My kids love this one, especially with the whipped cream on top. For this next recipe, I'm just making some sugar cookies that are really nice and festive for the holiday. I'm just starting off with about two thirds cup of Smart Balance into my mixer, or you could also do a third cup of butter and then a third cup of shortening, and you're just gonna get this nice and creamy in your stand mixer. Once you have all of that cream together, you're gonna be adding in one cup of flour, you're gonna add in one egg, three quarters cup of sugar, a tablespoon of milk, a teaspoon of baking powder, as well as about a teaspoon of vanilla, and then just a little dash of salt, and then you can go ahead and mix all of that together. Once that is well combined, you can go ahead and add in your second cup of flour. So I'm adding in one more cup here. And then I find that when I use the Smart Balance instead of the butter and margarine combination, I will usually have to add in a little bit of extra flour. So I would say I do closer to two and a half cups of flour total for this recipe, but you will know when it gets that right consistency. And then you're just going to chill this either for a couple of hours in the fridge or you can do it overnight like I did. I just wrap it up in some saran wrap and then I just put this in the fridge overnight and it was perfect for making with the kids the next day. So this is actually the next day. This is great that you can just make it ahead of time, make it the night before, and then you can actually do the cutout part with your kids, which is the fun part. So this is where I actually realized that I need to add a little bit of extra flour. I started to roll it out and it was cracking just a little bit. So that's a really good indicator that you just need to add a little bit of extra flour. And I just kind of work this into the dough, knead it in a little bit. And once I got that extra flour in there, it rolls out 
perfectly. So if you ever have that issue when making sugar cookies, just add a tiny bit more flour in there and then you should be good to go. So I did decide to divide mine into two different balls because I was doing two different cutouts. And then I'm just rolling this out until it's about an eighth inch thick. Now that my dough is all rolled out, I got my kids and they are ready to help me cut these out. This is one of my all time favorite memories from when I was a kid. So I definitely want to incorporate this with my own kids. They have so much fun helping cut them out. Easton in particular had fun with it. Brinley is more just watching and getting into everything. Don't worry, my husband was right there making sure that they did not fall off the chair. They're good to go and they had so much fun helping with this. It's always a little bit messy, it's a little bit crazy, but it's definitely a really fun thing to do with your kids. With my mom, we did them every single holiday. So we did them for Christmas, we did them for Valentine's Day, Halloween, any holiday that we could make cookies for, we did it and we always had so much fun doing it. You're gonna bake these cookies at 375 degrees for anywhere from seven to 10 minutes. It's just gonna depend on how thick your cookies are and also the size of them. But when they come out, they're really not gonna be super golden brown and that's just because we used the Smart Balance on these ones. So they're not gonna be super golden brown, but the bottom should be and you will know that they are done. So while those are cooling off, I did go ahead and move them over to a cooling rack and I'm just mixing up my frosting. So normally I will make my own out of just powdered sugar, a little bit of milk and vanilla, but this time I just decided to use the store-bought stuff to make my life a little bit easier. So I made purple as well as orange and I'm just getting all of that mixed together until I get the color that I want. Now for decorating these sugar cookies, I usually will get all of the frosting on them first before bringing my kids in because they're super young and they just make a mess out of things if I'm not careful. So I try to get everything frosted before actually letting them help with decorating. I did decide to just decorate the pumpkins myself first. I wanted these ones to be a little bit cuter and not so messy. So I just add a little bit of green to the stem part and they made some really cute pumpkins. And then I'm moving on to the other cookies so for the hats I decided to just use the purple frosting and these are the ones that I just let my son decorate them how he wanted I just gave him the sprinkles and he went ham and had a blast doing it One little tip that I found with kids and using sprinkles is I a lot of times will actually put the sprinkles into a salt and pepper shaker. I find that it shakes out a lot less fast than the sprinkle containers that you get at the store. This way I don't end up with a million sprinkles on each cookie. So if you have young kids, that's just a little tip. It's helped a lot with my two year old. Here is how the cookies turned out. They're not perfect by any means, but we had a lot of fun making these together as a family. Now we're moving on to actually working with some little cutie oranges. So for these first ones, I'm actually just drawing a little pumpkin face on here. And don't laugh at my little face that I drew. I am not very artistic at all. I can edit videos, but that is just about it. So I just took a Sharpie and I'm just drawing right on the peel and making a little pumpkin face. Yes, it's not very cute, but it was fun for my kids. And then for the other one that I'm gonna be doing, I'm getting my orange peeled for 
for this one. And then I'm just gonna be adding a little stem on here and it turns out perfect and it looks just like a little pumpkin. So for your stem, you can either use celery or green pepper. I use the pepper and it is super cute and great for a nice healthier Halloween option. Alright guys, that is going to wrap up today's video. I really hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button if you have not already. And don't forget to head over to Mama Cat's channel. I know you guys are going to love her. She has very good videos and I know she would love to have you over there. So go give her some love and let her know that I sent you. And I will catch you guys in my next video. Thanks so much for watching. Bye. As a young girl, the fields were mine We played hide and seek for hours Raised our shadows among the pines So offshore, playful and free